Ethan wasn't one for settling down. He craved the constant hum of new places, the thrill of unfamiliar languages, the warmth of chance encounters. Every few months, his worn backpack would be slung onto a different bus, a different train, carrying him towards a new adventure. Europe, with its patchwork of cultures and rolling landscapes, was his current playground. Summers were spent following the harvest, his calloused hands nimbly plucking peaches in Greece or cherries in Italy. Winters, however, demanded a southward escape, a chase for the elusive sunshine. Last year, in the vibrant chaos of 1989, Venice had held his attention for a glorious October. After a three-week stint helping out at a bustling canal-side trotteria, the familiar itch for movement started to gnaw at him. This time, he yearned for something different, a slower pace, a chance to truly soak in the passing scenery. So, instead of the usual budget airlines, he opted for the chugging romance of the Balkan Express a train that meandered its way through Yugoslavia before crossing into Bulgaria and finally reaching its destination, Sofia. The journey promised a day and a half of leisurely travel, a perfect opportunity to stretch his legs, devour his dog-eared travel guide, and perhaps strike up conversations with fellow wanderers. As the train rattled out of Venice, the carriages held a sleepy quietude. Ethan spent the first few hours gazing out the window, the sun dappling the Italian countryside in a tapestry of gold and green. Just as he was about to succumb to boredom, the train pulled into Zagreb, a jolt of activity shaking off the drowsiness. A flurry of passengers disembarked, replaced by a new wave of travelers. Among them were two young women, their laughter echoing down the corridor, their faces brimming with the infectious enthusiasm of backpackers on a mission. Curiosity peaked, Ethan struck up a conversation. He learned their names were Melanie and Carol, American adventurers making their way across Europe. They were heading to Bulgaria as well, though their itinerary included a detour to a small town called Bella Palanca. Ethan found himself easily drawn into their orbit. Their easy laughter and shared sense of adventure were a breath of fresh air. They compared travel stories, haggled good-naturedly over whose country had the best food. Ethan, unsurprisingly, championed the fresh pasta and vibrant salads of Italy, and made plans to meet up in Sofia over the weekend. As the sun began its descent, casting the landscape in an ethereal glow, a comfortable camaraderie settled between them. Belgrade brought a shift in the rhythm of the journey. Most passengers disembarked, leaving Ethan a solitary figure in the now spacious carriage. Melanie, however, hesitated. Why don't you join us for dinner, Ethan? She suggested, noticing his thoughtful expression. Carol echoed the offer, her smile warm and inviting. Ethan's stomach rumbled in agreement. He was indeed low on funds, his budget stretched thin by the unexpected delay in Venice. But before he could voice his hesitation, Melanie cut him off. Don't worry about it, she said, her voice firm but friendly. We can treat you. Consider it a celebration for our upcoming reunion in Sofia. There was no denying their genuine hospitality, 
So Ethan graciously accepted. They settled at a small, candlelit restaurant tucked away down a cobblestone street. The food, a hearty concoction of roasted vegetables and stewed meat, warmed them from the inside out. The conversation flowed easily, punctuated by bursts of laughter and whispered secrets shared across the flickering candlelight. The train journey resumed the next morning, the landscape transitioning from bustling towns to rolling hills and quaint villages. As they neared Bella Palanca, a pang of disappointment tugged at Ethan's heart. He had grown accustomed to the easy camaraderie of their company. Melanie, sensing his mood, squeezed his arm. Don't worry, she said with a wink, we'll catch up in Sofia. Have a blast in this mysterious Bella Palanca of yours. Bidding a fond farewell, Ethan watched as the girls disembarked their colorful backpacks bouncing cheerfully on their shoulders. With a wave goodbye, they disappeared into the maze-like streets of the town. A quiet settled over the train, broken only by the rhythmic hum of the wheels and the murmur of conversation from fellow passengers. The afternoon wore on, a sense of peaceful solitude washing over Ethan. He was lost in a book about Balkan folklore when a sudden commotion jolted him back to reality. A swarm of police officers, their faces grim and stern, boarded the train. Panic crackled through the air as they began questioning passengers, their voices raised in a harsh language. Fear tightened its grip on Ethan's stomach. He watched, heart pounding, as young people were singled out and escorted off the train. When two officers, one tall, 